Paul, 100 years since this company was founded here in Milton Keynes. Uh, just tell us how you're going to be celebrating the 100th year here at Dyson yeah, well, Dyecastle. Milton Keynes, we've been here approximately 60 years, but overall, as a company, it's 100 years. Um, how we'll be celebrating, who's to say? Um, it'll be a board decision next year, but I imagine there'll be a, some kind of summer party. And you used to, you started as just a casting business, is that correct? Yeah, it, as technology's evolved, originally it was cast, clip, out the door. Then as you see in the factory, there's certain manual machines that came in for drilling and tapping simple operations. But then as customer, customer demand has gone up, we had to meet it, so there's CNC milling. Started with simple drilling and tapping, and then profile milling, facing, and the, you know, in terms of added value processes, there's painting, you know, uh, plating, polishing. You know, it's a fully, fully finished product we offer. Uh, you, you've got some factory here as well. What sort of um, square footage are you operating out of? Approximately 90,000 square feet, but the two sites combined, because it is all in one estate, is in the region of 200,000 square feet now. And when it comes to output, a lot of product going through here, thousands of castings yeah. machined a week? Yeah, um, uh, from as little as um, 20 a week for certain Aston Martin and sm the smaller you know, prestige car companies to up to 10,000 a week for more than mass production. I wouldn't say we concentrate on the mass production system, you know, the Chinese, indus Chinese industry can take that. We're more about local supply for local markets, but we have shipped all around the world anyway. And you have to keep investing in your machinery to keep the output there. Yeah. This was your latest investment, this B-Series Fanuc Robo Drill. I noticed this one's got a, a longer bed length on it as well. Has it been an impressive purchase? Yeah, with the new investments we've made of Fanuc in the recent years, we've gone for an extended bed length because our components can go quite long. And usually we would go for a metre bed machine and the Fanuc is a 600 bed machine. But this allows us to go up to, I think, an 800 millimetre bed. Sitting right next to this one, you've got a machine that's about four or five years older. Yeah. That's obviously been a, been a reliable workhorse yeah. for you as well, has it? Yeah, the key factor behind the decision was the fact that that machine's been here five or six years and has been very reliable, spares are very local, and the costs have been kept down, and it just keeps running and running. The new machine comes with, obviously, the new interface, which is the primary reason behind it. The spindle speed and the indexing unit matches what we do previously, programs come across very simply we you know it just ticks all the right boxes at the moment we purchased three of them uh, last april and the orders in now for three more which will be coming within six weeks oh, what three more machines yes so uh, yeah so the, we ordered them two weeks ago um the the longest lead time the machine's very quick and the lead time the longest lead time is the indexing head um so that, that that's otherwise we'd have them straight away now, often we go into Fanuc installations these days and we're talking about the, the BBT30 spindle starting to, to tackle more challenging materials, deeper cuts. Yeah. This story is a little bit different because you're not actually really pushing the machine to its limits, are you? But you still no. need to, to, to service, service your business with a reliable uh, production yeah. process. Yeah, to be honest, we, we cut aluminium, but we cut a lot of aluminium. We don't take big cuts. We take as little off as possible, you know, little as 0.2 a mil. The more we take off, the more it costs us because it's the scrap value is less and the fact we're tapping. So the application that we're actually looking at here on the machine as well, that's like a heat shrink, is it? Yeah, so that's a part we've had for 12 years here. It's drilling, tapping, some quite long series drills and taps in there to get past key features. And then we mill some faces with um, up to, I think, 120 mil face mills. So the machine's got to be quite rigid because the surface quality's got to be good and the tolerance is quite tight. And you did say that the through spindle coolant had made a difference on this machine as well. Yeah, the, the ap end application for this part is straight onto an electronics line and that we've supplied direct to line side. So if any swarf comes out of any holes, it causes them major problems and it's major non-conformity, so it, it's unacceptable. One of the first questions I asked you as well off camera was about the swarf extraction here, but you, you haven't gone for any solution on that, but therefore yeah. you don't really need it, do you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything comes down to a budget. I mean, it's what you want from the unit. We generate very little swarf. Um, we take care of all our machines and we have a dedicated CNC maintenance engineer for it who keeps good care of the machines. And with that in mind, it's emptied daily and we don't generate enough to fill it daily. Are these machines running 24 hours a day or just single or double shift? Uh, 24 hours a day bar um, shift break, so 22 and a half hours is a typical one, although we do crossover shifts, so we try, can keep them running 24 hours a day. But what about maintenance then? How do, you, how do you go about making sure that the machines are yeah, kept so up to speed? PPM sheet, so every shift the operator does his checklist, 
that it goes to a daily checklist, then goes to a weekly and a monthly, and then Fanuc come in um, annually to service it. But as I say, we've got an, a, a Fanuc approved engineer on site who can go to that level of doing it himself. And if you had a program from one of your older machines and a product from one of your older machines, yeah. is it quick to shift them around? Are they, yeah. Do you almost have these as cells that are modular? Yeah, we, we don't have to go to extremes with like using major CAD CAM services because we're mainly drilling, tapping and facing. But in terms of coming from our older machines, they were sort of a slightly varied version of FANUC. This is the true FANUC language. So there'd be a, a, a slight change at the front and the end of the program, but nothing beyond that. So, but between each machine, they're all the same. Normally when a company purchases anywhere above two or three machines, there's a big process of justification, there's uh, competition involved, you know, there's, there's three or four solutions put on the table. Yeah. Was it a much easier process and decision for you here at Dyson Diecasting to go for the, all the FANUX? Yeah, well, the, the one from 2012 definitely helped because that was proven and no one likes to take a risk on it. Price was right, delivery was right, justification was improved lead times for parts coming off. Um, we're trying to get down to a two shift system because the third shift carries such a heavy premium and with wage pressure going up and up and up, it really does make a difference. Can you see now why Fanuc are becoming a really big threat to some of the uh, major machine tool suppliers around the world with this robo drill? Absolutely, I mean the sheer volume of machines they're putting into the industry you speak to anyone in the industry, it's all FANUCs that are going in at the moment. You know, it, it, it sells itself, to be honest, but you still have to do your due diligence, go with three suppliers, check what's available on the market, but then it made it a very easy decision. Good luck with the celebrations for the 100th year next year. Thank you very much, Paul. Cheers.